All right, so we talked about in the previous video, and frankly, it's kind of been the theme of this entire module, that just because you have a great product or service and just because you know that someone might want that great product or service, that doesn't necessarily mean that they want it now, uh, and from you at least not yet. And this is a concept that still a lot of people I've found have, have a hard time with. So uh, I kind of want to explain the two different types of doubt and really how they manifest themselves in personal relationships. So the first type of doubt, and kind of the one that we think of the most, is a prospect's doubt in you or your brand. This is the one that marketers more times than not point at. This is the one that we feel like, you know, we really got to handle on. This is when you get into things like overcoming objections and having a frequently asked questions uh, section on, on, on your site. And, you know, just rambling on and on and on about, like, how do we address this scenario and this one and this one and this one, right? What we're trying to do there is we're trying to overcome a prospect's doubt in us. Also using testimonials and case studies and having trust seals and things like that. They're all about reducing a prospect's doubt in you or your brand, right? This is one type of doubt. This is the same type of doubt, again, going back to dating and relationships, where if you walk in and you say, you know, hey, can I buy you a drink? The other person might look at you and be like, I, I don't know. I don't know you, you know? You know, if you look the part, if you seem like a nice guy, if you or, or young, you know, you came, you know, went about it in the right way, in the right sequence and proportion. If you're not like at a funeral, right? If it's at like a club, um, then and, and maybe it's perfectly appropriate to do that. Then you're going to say, yeah, sure. But you're probably going to watch the person just to make sure that they don't, you know, slip a little something in the drink when you're not looking, right? Because there is still some doubt in you and your brand in that particular scenario, right? So how do we overcome that? We overcome it by baby steps. We overcome it by, can I get you a drink? Okay. He got me a drink and you know, it wasn't poisoned. Um, so maybe you get another one, maybe hang out, maybe you talk a little more, the relationship builds. That's how we overcome a doubt in you or your brand. But this actually isn't the biggest, uh, hurdle that we as marketers and business owners have to overcome when architecting conversion funnels. The biggest hurdle, the biggest, you know, most difficult type of doubt to overcome, which isn't always, you know, an issue is this one. A prospect's doubt in themselves. A prospect's doubt in themselves. And I'll tell you what this looks like in the case of, you know, personal relationships. What it looks like is, you know, I just got out of a really terrible relationship and I don't think I'll ever find anyone, you know, ever again that will love me. I, I, I can't be in a place right now where I'll do that, right? Maybe you meet a nice person when you're out. You tell them, look, you seem like a really nice person, but I just got out of a really terrible relationship. I'm sorry, I can't right? What they're doing is that is down in themselves. It has nothing to do with the other person. They could have done everything right, but the prospect has doubt in themselves. This is actually the biggest hurdle that we as marketers have to overcome. Again, it doesn't exist in every single market, but you think if you're selling something in the health, you know, or weight loss space, right? How, how often have, have, you know, somebody, if they struggle with their weight, you know, they're going to doubt themselves. Sure, they're, they've probably tried a lot of stuff that didn't work and they're going to be very skeptical, but they're also going to be skeptical of themselves and their own abilities. We have to overcome both. And ignoring number two is one of the most detrimental and disastrous things that marketers do. So we have to identify, is this an issue? And if so, how do we overcome it? Now, fortunately, the way that you overcome both is through lead magnets and tripwires. Lead magnets and tripwires are how you overcome both by slow walking the relationship, by being patient, by delivering value in advance, and by delivering little victories. Fortunately, these are all things that we're going to be talking about in the next couple of modules. So we're going to go ahead and close out this one now. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already completed your statement of value, if you haven't crafted that yet, make sure you do that before you move on. But for now, let's move on and talk about how you can optimize your lead magnet.